We are live. Fabulous. Welcome, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us for this very special live stream today with three, these three beautiful ladies and very talented artists. So for all of you who are with us live right now, fantastic. Please let us know you're here. You're welcome to drop us a comment in the chat. Let us know if you can see us all and hear us all. And if you have any questions and comments as we're going through, please pop those in the comments below and we will follow along and see those. And if you're joining us for the replay, welcome also. Um, this is very exciting for me. Uh, these three ladies have each got their own amazing, unique, authentic and beautiful manner of expressing themselves in the world through their art. And this is something that's very close to my heart. For any of you who aren't yet familiar with me, I'm a personal branding photographer, videographer and trainer, passionate about helping visionary women in particular to shine on camera and become the star of their brand instead of just the face of their brand. And so this is very close to my heart. Um, Talana, Welcome. Hello. Talana's just said she's here. She made it today and she can see and hear all of us lovely ladies. Thank you, Talana. That's awesome. Okay. So um, as I was saying, our self-expression in the world is such an important thing. And especially now, and, and we were just chatting before going live, um, art plays such a beautiful role in our lives. And even in the case of, you know, the, the tough times, like we've all been going through. So, and these three ladies work with such beautiful soul. Um, and I've seen their work and it's just gorgeous. And they have different ways that they all contribute through their art as well in the world. So I'm going to hand over and give them each an opportunity to share a bit about their journeys and what they do. And I'm sure that you watching are going to find a lot of inspiration from them um, and a lot of insight and some lovely ways that art can also contribute to your lives. So let's kick off. I'm going to start with Nikki. Um, Nikki, I'm going to make you full screen. So if you can share a bit about your journey and what art means to you in your life. Here we go, ladies. Hi, everybody. Uh, once again, thanks, Naomi, for affording this opportunity to us artists to live stream with you. I've been watching a lot of your live streams and I've been so impressed with the talent of the, all the ladies on your group. So, um, you know, it's just wonderful that we can be sharing and I'm sharing today. Well, I am Nikki Thompson, as it says at the bottom there, and I'm an artist and I've been painting for the last 30 years. And I must say, it's just been an absolute ex a wonderful experience of my lifetime. And well, I must just tell you a little secret though. My art career started actually when I was uh, five years old. And unfortunately, I drew a car, a, a picture of a house on my dad's brand new car with a stone. You can imagine I wasn't very popular with that. But nevertheless, my mom still today says to me, well, I can't believe you still pers persevered with your art um, after the, the harsh punishment that I received for that bad the deed. But nevertheless, I, I'm still painting and um, having painted for many years, I've eventually had people asking me, Nikki, can you teach us to paint or could you teach our children to paint? And I thought, well, that's a great idea. I'd love to share my knowledge with people. So I started teaching children's art. And it was awesome. And then I had the parents saying, could you teach us art? So I thought, well, that's good. Okay, no problem. And that's how my art career in the teaching started. And I've been teaching for the last 25 years and loved every moment of it. And I'll be teaching till the day, painting and teaching till the day that I can have my last breath. So um, the, my studio setting, I actually teach art lessons in my studio at home which is set on a beautiful rivulet with the sound of water running and the birds in the background. So to me, art is about tranquility and about peace. And that's what I love to bring to people's lives through my art and through teaching my art. And when people leave my art class, they always say they feel so relaxed and so invigorated with just being in, in, in one with the, in tune with themselves. I also run art workshops which allows people from all over um, different parts of the countries to come and join my classes. 
And then my real highlight, as you can see, my happiness in my face, <laughs> is to uh, run an, a wildlife art retreat um, at the, towards the end of the year, where uh, it affords people to come on a beautiful art um, a, a time away in the bush, very affordable, and um, it's five, four days, and you get to really experience it, game drives, as well as amazing uh, sightings of animals, and then art as well. Some people actually don't even paint. They just say, I just want to sit and read, or I just want to do some photography. So it's their space. So that's really a, my big highlight that I really do enjoy. Um, why do I teach? Well, you know, having been a life coach or being a life coach, I just think that I love to teach people to tap into the right side of their brain. And that is where the creativity all happens in the brain. And then it enables them to unleash that creative visual voice that they have, that they might, they thought they actually never had. And to see them progress and grow is just so phenomenal. And um, I've actually had my students mention that it's not only helped them in their art endeavors, but also it has helped them to overcome challenges and even to give them more self-confidence. So for me, art is not just putting a beautiful picture on, on canvas. It's far more than that. It's far deeper. And um, it, it's just so satisfying. So you might say, well, who's art for? Well, if you've got the desire and the passion, just arrive. Bring your paintbrush and you'll be learning how to paint without a doubt. And um, I mean, I've had people say, oh, I couldn't, um, I've got not a, a creative bone in my body. And, you know, I've had um, accountants, I've had lawyers who passed through my doors and they still paint. And some of them have actually become very well-known artists. So really, if you feel that it's something that you would perhaps enjoy to do, you know, give yourself the time and um, don't hesitate to contact me. I'm very happy to. I'm also actually on the in the process of launching my own online school. So one can actually run art classes um, or can partake online in the comfort of their own home. So that's really wraps up about me and what art means to me and what I really do with my art. So thanks, Naomi. Thank you, Nikki. That's very inspiring. And I've had the privilege and pleasure of photographing Nikki at her beautiful studio, which is just gorgeous. And the garden and the bird song, it's really beautiful. And Nikki, I'm very excited for you with your online um, ventures now. Um, yes. And uh, I'm so proud that you actually did your first online webinar recently. That's very exciting. Well, thanks to you and your your course that I enrolled in. <laughs> oh, thanks, Nikki. It's it's very wonderful to see you really like putting yourself out there and shining mm. on that camera. Mm. Thank Brilliant. You. Mm, would you like to, um, while we're with you, would you like to show everybody a little bit of your art? Well, I've only got two pieces here. I hope that they will be you'll be able to see them, but I'd love to. This is my latest work. This is actually the latest work I'm doing. I do love flowers. However, I do paint all sorts of topics, from flowers to portraits to landscapes. But at the moment, just because spring is in the air, I do believe that I, I am painting flowers. So this particular one here is um, of a protea. I don't know if it's, it's so straight. Sorry, it's not that. It's quite confusing. Um, so I use a medium, a mixed media, and I really enjoy using mixed media because it almost just um, a painting involves without being too meticulous and pedantic about that. Um, and my approach, and then this is just a little one. Um, I've also loved roses, and that's another sort of loose painting that I've done there as well. So that's all I've got to show. I've got lots more, but that's all in the studio. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you, Nikki. We're Thanks. wonderful. We're going to come back to you. But before okay. we do, um, let, let's give um, Sarah a chance next and then Isabel um, with regard to them sharing a bit of their stories. So just to let all of you know, I actually met Sarah at a meditation circle and it was um, it was hosted by Gillian Higginson, who I interviewed two weeks ago, in fact. So if any of you missed that, go back and have a watch. And Gillian actually led us through a beautiful meditation in that session also. And Sarah and I also worked on a beautiful project together for her um, quite recently on, um, we did a photo shoot in our studio and Sarah did all of the, um, all of the, uh, how can you say Sarah, you, you like designed it, you created the style, the mood, everything that you wanted with beautiful women models. Um, and Sarah, your, 
thinking there was almost to really show highlight the goddess in every woman. Am I right? Beautiful. I loved it. So I'm going to give you the floor and you can please share with us a bit about your journey with art. Here you go. Thank you. Thanks, Naomi. Thanks for having me on. And uh, yes, for that fabulous photo shoot. So I started um, my journey. I did art at university um, and struggled my way through sort of working and painting and so on for a little while in the UK and then decided to come um, traveling and I ended up in South Africa um, and love the place. I met my husband here. We now have a family. Um, but I needed to work. So I, my journey took me down the design route. I needed to do something creative. Um, so I began my own graphic design company for about 10 years. Um, it was creative, but not creative enough. It got to the point um, about three years ago where I was just really realizing that I needed more. Now, back in the day, back in the UK, I used to paint um, landscapes. Um, industrial landscapes, buildings, the architecture, everything. Um, but I'm so long apart away from it, I was very sort of like, what am I going to paint? So it was actually a student form art group that I was introduced to through a friend um, that I joined, and they had an art class and they had a, a model, various models, um, and you could draw them. And for the first time ever, I painted a portrait and I was hooked. Um, and so for me, that's become my subject matter really, and particularly women, um, just trying to, as you said, with the photo shoot that we did, I'm trying to portray that inner goddess that is, I think, inherently in all women. Um, it doesn't matter what shape, size you are, whatever, but there is that inner goddess, you know? Um, and it's just trying to pull some emotion out and um, convey that to the viewer. Um, so, Art to me, is, it's it's soul food. <laughs> I can't say it any other way. It's the the one thing I think, um, apart from family, that's gotten through um, the the lockdown. Um, I think it's I think it's helped a tremendous number of people, both artists and art um, viewers. You know, because I think it is um, it heals. It sort of inspires people. You know, um, obviously everyone has different tests, and you know, but each has to find what works for them and what they need. And, and I think that's you know that's it is. It's soul food uh, for so many. Um, Sarah Sean is my name. That was um, the name I was given by my Welsh grandfather, which means Sarah Jane, which is actually my real name. Um, so I, I took that on as a bit of a pseudonym. Um, no one can pronounce it. Um, everyone calls me Sarah Sian. <laughs> but it's not it spelled so I pronounced Sarah Sean. Um, I, so I, yes, I paint the portraits um, predominantly, but I also have a real love for wildlife, particularly the African wildlife. Um, and I try to do a little bit of charity work, sort of doing, sketches and paintings that I can either, well, ideally give a portion, um, if not all of the proceeds to wildlife conservation, uh, because that's something that's really close to my heart. Um, and it's a nice way to be able to give back something, you know. I'd love to have an exhibition one day where, I don't know, 50% of the proceeds of the whole exhibition go to, um, to wildlife conservation. Um, and yeah, what else can I tell you? Um, I work, Small and large is a, an example here. Um, mixed media, I love collage, mixing um, different materials together. Um, I do use a lot of fabric. I've been doing sort of with a photo shoot that I did with you. Um, we did some with African headdresses on, and then I portray that in the paintings with using fabric and so forth. Um, I like symbolism in my work, um, using a lot of the African or sacred geometry just try and sort of um, bring across what I'm trying to say um, in the portrait more. Um, I like to have that hidden, hidden sort of messages in there somewhere. Um, and yeah, I think it's um, it's, it's fulfilling. Um, it's hard work. <laughs> I'm not arguing with that. Um, but it's so fulfilling. And I can lose time whenever I'm painting. Um, I have to set an alarm for going to fetch the children from school because it, once I get lost, that's it. And I'd, I'd, I'd totally bear away and remember that I was late for picking them up. 
So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's something I'm very, very grateful to be able to do um, full time. And I just hope that, you know, the future um, brings lots of uh, you know, new opportunities and so on. And I can keep doing this. Beautiful. Thank you, Sarah. And I have just been disturbed by my golden retriever. And I know you have one too. Yes. <laughs> because I've seen him in your studio. <laughs> um, he might have been on the camera by now. He'd have been on my knee. <laughs> okay. Oh, beautiful. Um, Sarah, that's stunning. And I just love your work. Um, and also your wildlife work. Um, which I've seen, uh, this, the sketches as well, just absolutely stunning. Um, and I love that correlation. Um, Isabel, we're coming to you, but I know, Nikki, you also love your wildlife and mm. um, do some beautiful birds too. Um, and Sarah, it's, it's wonderful also because I think you have an international clientele as far as I know. So people anywhere in the world can really be ordering your work. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. So I've recently set up my website um, so that, um, and it's, it, Look, it's, you still have to email me to actually place an order through the site, but that is coming. So there's going to be an e-commerce platform. Um, I sell prints. Um, they're limited edition prints of some of my work, um, which is, that's been going really well, which is really nice. But yes, a lot of it um, goes to, I've got some collectors in uh, the US and um, the UK, Denmark, quite a few. It's, yeah, it's been great. Wonderful. Can you hold us a couple of pieces up for us to have a look? There's, well, this is a recent collection. Um, you can see there's another one behind here. There's one of about five. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so these are quite a few of them. They've got little bits of fabric in little bits of elements of collage um, and so on. I love mark making um, using, like I say, different materials pens, charcoal, charcoals. This is actually charcoal and paint. So the face itself is is charcoal and this is on a wooden board. Um, a lot of the other work um, I do is is on canvas. Um, this is a recent one. Um, it's actually still in progress. <laughs> so we have only one eye that is <laughs> this side <laughs> isn't finished yet. But that's one that's uh, currently in progress. Um, and then this big one here. I think is finished. I'm, I'm living with her for a, a few more days just to decide, and I may have a, a buyer for her um, that saw it on Instagram while I was busy um, creating, um, and then she contacted me and said she'd be very interested. So let's fingers crossed. So beautiful, see. wonderful, Sarah. That's yeah. exciting. That's my first one. That is so big, and it oh. takes a lot of paint, <laughs> which I didn't realise. And a lot of, yeah, and I had to rearrange my studio because I haven't got a very big studio. Um, put it all in one corner so that I can back out the door in order to get far enough away to work out whether it's all right or not. <laughs> Brilliant. Fantastic, Sarah. I'm excited. And I love what all of you ladies do actually on Instagram, just talking about that. Um, I've seen all of you use like little videos in your studios, which is super exciting and lovely. So I'm very excited for you all with the traction that you're getting online as well. Um, whoops. <laughs> okay. Only on a live video. <laughs> yeah, always. Or I've had worse on live. <laughs> okay, brilliant. And so, let, Isabel, let's move on to you and we'll come back to all of you um, shortly. But, Isabel, let's hear from you about your journey. And it's been so lovely for me to meet you also uh, a couple of months ago through Nikki, in fact, and an art group that both of you belong to. Because, if I'm not mistaken, you use similar paints, but very different subjects, actually. And I'm very inspired by each of your art. Um, and Isadore, I'm so inspired by how much you've been doing for yourself on camera, um, filming and photographing yourself in your gorgeous studio in Brussels. So it's been amazing to meet you. I'm so proud of you. And I'm going to put you on solo so that you can share a bit about your journey. Here you go. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Nikki. I'm, I'm so excited when you asked me to, to join this, this event. So yeah, as as, um, as a student of yours, actually, I'm, uh, I'm really excited to meet you actually in real life, if we can say so, um, even if it's through Facebook. 
Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm actually um, the same in the same group as Nikki. Uh, we've both been trained by Golden, which is an American um, art uh, supply paint supplies company, and we've been through the same the same training, not at the same time, and that's how we actually met, if we can say so. Um, yeah, I'm an artist, and I'm an art educator. I'm living here in Brussels, in Belgium. Uh, where I teach mixed media. And um, I would say that I've been, not that I've been an artist all, all my life, but I've, I've been in love with painting since I was a little girl. Even in, in kindergarten, I can remem remember the days when the teacher would um, set up the easels and we would put our apron on and then we would take the big brushes and, and paint with poster paints and that was my kind of thing. And since then, um, I've kept painting as a hobby, one of my hobbies um, for when, when I was growing up. And when I finished school, I was thinking, well, maybe I could become like an architect which I was thinking was a nice way to put everything together, the painting, the creativity. And at the time, um, people told me, mm, architect, there's no job opportunity. Uh, the market is saturated, you better study something else. So I took economics without any conviction. I got, uh, I got my degree. I got a job in finance, which I hated. And um, I quit my job and I went uh, working for an international NGO, who, which sent me on a mission to Mozambique, where I worked for two years I, as a logistician in Mopoto. And um, at the time, Mozambique was still a country at war. So life was kind of really difficult. Uh, the job was really hard too, but really fulfilling because, I mean, we were helping the population and there were huge needs. But when I had the free time, what was it to do? Nothing. I mean, we couldn't go out of the city. We couldn't go out. We couldn't uh, do sports. We couldn't go for a walk. So we were like staying at home. And I was craving for painting, and there was no way we could find any art supplies in Mobuto. So I was with my pencil and my notepad, and I, I, was, I was growing and growing and growing. So um, back to Belgium after two years. I'm, I went on working with the same NGO, but I knew in my body that I needed to nurture that creative part of me. So I took evening classes in interior design and in painting. And I had this wonderful teacher that uh, who, who taught me a lot about color, about composition, about texture. And that's how I started um, integrating texture into my paintings. And, and really, I went deeper into mixed media. So I would say that was the start of me as an artist, even if it was still a hobby. And um, I, I kept on painting, and I had my first exhibition in 2006 here in Brussels. And since then, I maybe participated in four or five other exhibitions, the last one being um, last year in, in London. Um, so, how come I, become, I became an, a, a teacher? Well, um, three years ago in, um, in another job, you know, I mean, life went on. I got married, I, I got kids and so on, and I had several other jobs. But three years ago in the job I was in, um, I, I had a very difficult time. My, my job changed and um, I went into a very, uh, a period of a uh, high routine. My job was really detailed up to the minute. Uh, I would have to um, conduct the same meetings, the same workshops, to have the same slides, to do the same things weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and years. And it had lost any interest. It had lost any creativity, all the creativity that was in it. And I started really disintegrating. It, I mean, I felt like I was disappearing literally and what happened is that yeah, I, I started 
to burn out and I had to stop working. So at home, being at home on the long clean, guess what? I started painting and um, that's how I discovered acrylic pouring. And for those who know a bit about painting, it's a technique that doesn't require any brushes. And it's just playing with fluid painting and, and the work of gravity on the canvas. And that made me actually dive into painting seven days a, a week, eight hours a day, for weeks and for weeks. It was such a healing process for me to rediscover the joy of, of painting, the, 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 the mere confidence of doing something that I was happy with. And um, it really helped me heal from that, from that burnout. And then when, when I felt better, I was thinking, well, if it helped me that much, it surely has to help other persons that are going through life transitions, be it burnout, be it a, a divorce or retirement or empty nesting, whatever. So that's how I started teaching. And, um, and yeah, and the students who came to me were women, most of them in life transitions. And um, I could see them really reconnecting to their, as, to their inner child, you know, like how you feel when you're a child, you, you, don't think, you, you don't think about what are people going to say about what I've done. Uh, you have no fear of failure. You have no fear of judgment. You just do it because you're happy with it. And that's, that's what happens when in, in my class. That's what happens when you just let go and, and experience the, the painting. And I'm convinced that whatever you do in art or in creating, it can be art, but it can be gardening. It can be cooking. It can be knitting that you, you rediscover how it is to be a child and the pleasure that it is to be creative. So that's how, that's how important art is for me in my life today. And that's what I uh, really commit to transmit to my students, that I will help them thrive through life transitions with uh, um, reconnecting them to their creative, to, to their creative power. So that's, that's, that's about my journey. I love your journey, Isidore. It absolutely speaks to my soul. So many things that you said there. And thank you for sharing so sincerely and vulnerably about your journey. Um, I, I can absolutely understand the, the way that creativity can heal. Um, and one of the things that it's, it, it came, I came to creativity so late in life because it was just not, it wasn't, it was never prioritized when I was at school at all. Um, and those of us who did well academically were completely steered into science and maths and it was, art did not feature. Um, and it took me so long to, to get to understand the incredible joy that you get from creativity. In fact, a very random thing that probably none of you know about me, but I went for one fortune telling session once ever when I was about 25, um, randomly with a friend of mine in Cape Town. And the, it was a beautiful little lady, her name was Patsy. And all she did in this whole reading, I was doing computers. I was actually a computer programmer because that was where I'd been steered. And she kept saying, you're so creative, you're so creative, you're so creative. I was like, what does that even mean? <laughs> so, um, and then it still took me another 10, 15 years to really find it. So I love what you're doing for women. Um, and I absolutely understand how much it can help them. It, it, as you say, going through transitions and that thing, the way that you express about getting in touch with your inner child and playing and not worrying about making mistakes, yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah. And that's something that I try to convey in my courses with being on camera to also play on camera and actually not worry about making mistakes. So I'm so happy to have you all on live here because live is probably the ultimate way to 
not worry about making mistakes because we can. But, you know, that's where the magic lies also. Um, so thank you, Isabel. I'd also just love to give you an opportunity to show us a few pieces of your work, if you can. Yeah, so I'm working mainly on really large pieces, like, like the one you can see in, in my bag. And um, but I also do a smaller pieces. Um, well, for me, for me, that's that's a, a small one. But um, during my classes, we go to even smaller. That that would be kind of my that's my signature, like using a, a white corner, and I always use really. Um, colors from nature. I'm really inspired by nature and uh, the way that you see nature from, from, from the sky, as if you were a bird, you know, taking the big picture. And, um, and then, yeah, and then I can go a bit smaller, which is what I do as practice, actually. Wow. Those are gorgeous. I love them. And Isidore, you also, am I right that, because I've seen on your Instagram profile, do you also sell for like home decor and even um, hotels and residential and all of that? Yeah, absolutely. That's um, that's actually my, um, my, I said, you know, Naomi, I said to you once, my, my mission is to bring more beauty to the world. So, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, well, if, if my art is in a hotel, then hundreds of people would see it at the same time and hundreds of people would experience beauty at the same time. So, yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing. And I've got a website too. And, um, and I probably will start online courses in, in the middle of next year. Wonderful. That's so exciting. Thank you, Isidore. And I love that what you say there, that's what all three of you are doing. You really are lighting up the world with your beauty. So Talana says such distinct styles and all gorgeous pieces of art with a smile. Thanks, Talana. I agree with you. That's why I was so excited to bring all these ladies on together. And something that you spoke about, um, Isidore, I know more than likely resonated with Nikki because I also know Nikki has a story about, is it beauty, Nikki, who you helped through a stroke with art? Yes, yes. Can I, yeah. Can I put sure, you back on? Pleasure. Yes, with pleasure. Um, yeah, beauty is actually, she, uh, her and her husband, they actually um, work with us and, um, and they, they basically, she had a stroke and could, could no longer work. And I just saw, you know, she, she lives on our property with us and I just saw that she was deteriorating and um, she actually had two strokes. But then I noticed that she was deteriorating and I thought, you know, there's some way that I can just, um, you know, with the stroke, the first stroke, she only lost some use of her arm. Then we managed to regain that to a certain degree, but her right hand was fine. Then the second stroke she actually had, it was more affected the brain. But she's come right um, slowly. We've worked with her. And then I just thought, let me actually introduce her to some art. And she has found her niche and she loves it. She goes to my studio whenever she feels she wants to. There's a little station set up for her and she can just go and sit and paint and create. And um, at times I'll go in and assist her and I'll give her some ideas and, and just also inspire and motivate her. But generally I'll go in there and she's there 24-7. So um, that is very rewarding for me to see that it's actually very healing at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I can just imagine that. And also um, is something that um, Isidore touched on there as well from a confidence point of view to when you you see something that you've been able to create and actually to build that. Um, so inspiring. Thank you, Nikki. It's um, got such far-reaching effects. Naomi, there's a, there's a story I might, I might be sharing about that because, um, you know, I had this student who came to my classes and she was she had just lost her job. Uh, she, she, she's, she's about 55. And um, so she started uh, taking my classes and it's been now um, like two years that she's, she's coming. And last week she said to me, you know, there's one thing I learned uh, during your classes. And I said, well, what is it? And she said, 
Well, I learned uh, to stop comparing myself. I said, that's great that, that you stop comparing yourself with, with what the others in the class do. And she said, yeah, but not only that. I stopped comparing myself to other women. I'm, I'm good enough. I'm just perfect as I am. And I was like, if, if I, I've managed to transmit that to one person, that's, I mean, that made my day. Fantastic. I absolutely love that. Thank you, Isidore. Yes. It, and it brings to mind something that I often teach in my classes, which is um, that beautiful quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson, where he says that pretty is something you're born with, but beautiful, that's an equal opportunity adjective. And we all are beautiful and we all are creators, as you all say. Um, it's, it's, such a, it's such a gift for all of us. And Sarah, it, it brings me back to the, um, the women's art exhibition that you are participating in, am I right? Would you is like to share a little bit about that? There's actually a couple. Um, so there's the Julie Miller Art Gallery um, and the um, Artists Africa. They've done a combination, um, which is the all woman exhibition. Um, so I'm participating, I'm one of the top 100 that got through to that. Um, that's within South Africa. Um, and then I um, was selected um, out of um, quite a few international artists to do um, Women Making the Mark. Um, which is um, in an a art gallery in California. Um, and I was lucky enough to be um, accepted, one of my pieces was accepted for that. Um, and that's all about women, empowering women um, from all walks of life. And um, just also empowering women artists, because obviously in history, if you think back, the majority of artists, famous artists that we all know were male. Um, so it's, and, and again, I hear that you know, artists are, I think women are so busy looking after the children and the families and, and all of this, that and the other. They tend to put everybody else first and not themselves. So it's quite often, as you said, you know, through school, you were dissuaded from going down the artistic route, um, perhaps, and told to do something better, not well, better, you know, maths or science or something like that. Um, or you were, you know, particular art teacher told you weren't good enough, you hear that all the time, um, but for whatever reason people are discouraged from following their passion and their creative sort of um, creativeness and we come to it later in life and as you know the other ladies Nikki and uh, um, Isa, as I were saying they it's very much about finding that confidence inside themselves um, and, you know, women go through an awful lot. A lot of women out there are, you know, suffer um, and are belittled and, and so on. And it's kind of an empowerment thing, I think, um, to be able to reclaim that and find you know, their creative niche, their whatever it may be. You know, it doesn't have to be art. Um, so it's about that, but also just about um, empowering them in, in other ways. You know, um, there's obviously a lot of abuse um, around the world um, and it, it's about sort of women who have to stand up and speak for themselves and so forth. So I don't have the piece here that was entered into that exhibition um, but it's uh, her name is Fiona, um, and it means in Swahili it means um, looking forward um, and then I, uh, behind it there is a uh, mandala like, a, like the lotus symbol which means um, in the Buddhist um, religion, it, it's sort of growth, spiritual growth and renewal and so on. So it was all about the symbolism behind um, you know, the lady uh, that I pictured in, in the artwork. So very exciting and it's a great opportunity. So yeah. Fantastic. And congrats, Sarah. That's a real kudos to you on both of those from the selection. Please excuse my dogs. We've got a doorbell rang. <laughs> so so in, in that similar vein, do you have any tips for ladies watching who may feel like they have, uh, like, as you say, maybe got swept up in their job or looking after their children or, and maybe feel like they might have become a bit disconnected or uh, not not so confident in their own self-expression. Um, do you have any tips for them in terms of their empowerment and just things they can maybe do, like, uh, you know, sort of daily or um, just to help them get back in touch and tune in and feel, develop that confidence? Yeah. Should I stick with you, Sarah? Do you want me to make you fall? Uh, yeah, um, I think you need to 
fine, fine. Because I mean, uh, it was I was guilty of this for many years. Um, you plod on, you carry on doing the same old, same old. You know, um, you you sort of get into a rut, if you like. You know, and I think it's just recognizing when that feeling is there, and then just trying different things, just finding some time for yourself, um, carving out time. Uh, there's a group um, on Instagram and their hashtag is actually carving out time. You need to find, you know, if it's half an hour, an hour, it's amazing what you can create. You can't say, you know, oh, I don't have time. You've got to find that time if it means getting up slightly earlier or doing it when the kids have gone to bed or something. You've got to start because if you, can't, if you don't start, it'll, it'll never continue, you know. Um, and try different things. Try to find out what it is that works for you and only by trying it well, you know. um, but I think it's it's, it's creativity is within all of us. Um, it just comes out in different ways. I and mean, I think people talk about talent, and that's measurable. That's that's like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You can't, you know, one, what one person thinks is um, is an amazing piece of art is somebody else goes, no, I'm not interested in that one. I like that one. You know, so you've just got to create what's within you um, and allow that. Tonight. And I think that's all you can do is treat yourself and try not, like, as the, um, uh, the lady that, that was taking a course said, you know, try to stop comparing to other people. No. It, it, it's, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's, it's because, you know, you aren't supposed to be like anybody else. You are supposed to be you. And that's the thing that you have to, and they do, what's the saying that the all that you seek is already within you anyway? So you have to find a way of connecting to that, be it, I don't know, taking a walk in nature, um, sitting, just listening to the sounds, I don't know, walking on the beach, if you have know, to walk nature, it's just finding a quiet space somewhere, to just work out what it is that, that you need, and then, you know, I mean, it might be writing, it could be gardening, it doesn't have to be painting, um, but it needs to be something that just kind of makes you happy and makes your, your soul sing. The way to and find out what these ladies teach you. You need classes, you see. <laughs> yes, I love that. Thank you, Sarah. Nikki, do you want to weigh in a little with some of your experience with your students also in terms of how we can do that, help each other? Yeah. Can I Sure. Well, I think, you know, that everybody is different. And that's what's so lovely is that we all have different, um, you know, everyone, it's not that you come and learn a specific style. I think a lot of people fear art because they imagine they've got to paint a picture perfect painting that looks like a photograph. And, you know, that is actually pretty boring. I mean, there are artists that are realist artists, and I think that's that's great. But then there are artists who are more abstract or impressionistic. And that's, that's a wonderful way that you can find your own artistic style or flair or niche. Um, and, and it doesn't, there shouldn't be any expectation. It should just be something that follows and flows as you develop and grow and develop your skills and your knowledge um, and just play. I really think it's, um, as Sarah said earlier, that it's, it's really like going back and just playing, just being a child again and, um, you know, tapping into that, uh, that, that, that realm. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And I, I've seen, Isidore, I've seen you um, on Instagram and that because you do beautiful captions and I've seen you talking about that too. And at one point I was so excited to see that you were playing on camera also because that's always my big goal for people. Um, and I love that you were able to tap into that because when we when we shift our focus from one thing to another, like in your case, you were you do that in your art naturally, and then initially when you face the camera, you're like, oh, this is a bit scary, and it's it's not necessarily that easy to apply the same thing to a new um, a, a new thing that you're doing. Um, but I love that. Have, have you got any stories for us about just playing with your with your um, Acrylic pouring. Yeah, of course, because um, especially acrylic pouring is is a lot about uh, learning to let go because mm -hmm. uh, the technique is such is as I said, you pour the paint on the canvas, so you 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 have an idea of what you want, but it's it's always a surprise. So it really pushes you to detach yourself from the results. 
And um, it's, it's amazing the transformation that the students uh, go through because, you know, they, they, they fetch their colors, they know what, to, what they want to have and they like pink or they like green. And then, and then when, the, when the paint is on the canvas, something else happened and you can't control it. And that's, that's one of the reasons why it helped me a lot through my burnout. I mean, it was a complete let go let go of any expectation. And if I had to give one tip to, to, to our viewers, that would be um, if you struggle finding what, what kind of creativity you have in yourself, just try and think about what is it that you do or that you used to do when you were younger, when you were a child, and that you could be doing all the time like like was it was it nikki or sarah who said i need to put a timer because i don't see time passing but well that's the same if you want to really find something for yourself that would fulfill you as as painting fulfills us just think about what is it you do that you could do all the time uh, a whole weekend without being stopped without eating without anything and and whatever the result that you would, would be happy with and that would be the first step to go into that start doing that again yes i love that isadore i'm quite goosey when you're speaking and i just want to say thank you to sandra lee she's just made a comment she said love this ladies great insights and she's given us some hearts thank you sandra thank you for joining us live too um i find this so inspiring and i love how you've honed in on that isadore the thing of not having expectation and letting go um, and it's, I see that so much also in photo shoots and video shoots because, you know, there's that anxiety, that little bit of anxiety because you don't know what's going to come out. You never know. Um, but that's where the magic lies. It's that alchemy of what can transpire. And typically things will happen that you could never expect. And I mean, Sarah, the shoot that we did together was a classic where we had five women models beautiful all and we were what we were doing was shooting photos for Sarah to use as original pieces to paint from and wasn't it amazing how I mean they just it's infinite the they, they sort of um took over in a really good way because I mean I had some ideas of, of what I wanted but it just became it just flowed you know they had oh we could try this and what about this particular sort of if pose like you know a different way and um uh, that it was fantastic. I mean, it was, yeah, it was more than I could have expected. Um, and it became, um, I think we just got a better feel from the photographs because it wasn't, you know, because they were doing what felt natural to them, but it came across really, really well. So I'm, yeah. I'm still, I've, I've used some of them. I'm still busy with some um, ideas to do a, a whole series on all of that, but it's just, um, I'm, I'm biding my time for, like I said, to get a bigger studio to. <laughs> I <laughs> just do want to do one at a time, and I kind of want to work in a series so that I can be working on more than one at once. I would just buy smaller ones, but not so the bigger ones. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Watch <laughs> yeah no absolutely i can imagine that because for the rest of you what was happening is we had the five ladies so in some cases they were all together and some we had two and then three and they were sort of holding each other and they were just they just flowed the the whole concept of races and uh, height and and sort of everything was just so yeah. it, Work though, didn't it? Yes, yes. exquisite skin tones. And the one, our one model was amazing. She was from Ghana, actually. So she she brought extra headdresses, and she was like, "Oh, let me do." She like was showing the other ladies how to do them, and yeah, it was it was beautiful. And that's that alchemy, like you were saying, um, Isadore, as well, to let go and actually let it happen. But sometimes that's one of the hardest things to do, isn't it? Especially yeah. hard. Yes. Yeah. With art, well, and on certainly in front of a camera, so, <laughs> so especially if you're a control freak, like uh, <laughs> I could mention, it's sort of it's really hard to just sort of not as 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 I said, just not um, hold on to the outcome. 
and yeah. try and sort of yes. go with the flow, which you know, a lot of when I start an art piece, I tend to plan it beforehand. I've got an idea of what I want, but then during the process, you've got to find a way of allowing kind of it's almost like letting mistakes happen as well. Something happens and you go, ooh, that works. And and then incorporate that and yet it and still make it work. You know, sometimes you you know, sometimes it is a mistake and you've got to say okay no no no. But other times you can go with it and it leads you to something new and a new in, in, inquiry and yeah and, and that's that's the fun part. Um apart from getting messy and that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure ladies also know that. Hey, you, you've got to look in the mirror before you go out to do anything because you've got paint all over your face. <laughs> Beautiful, yeah. I love that. And it's so true. And I, it's one of the things that um, I say to people as well if I'm teaching them about confidence on camera. It's the thing to allow yourself to make those mistakes. But um, it really, the magic really is in the flow. Um, so, any any last thoughts then in terms of how to get into the flow? Like, if, if, when you're in that control freak mode, or you know, or the left brain mode, let's call it. Um, is it or would you like to give us a few little tips? Because I know you're good at getting into the messy stuff. Can you share that with us? Just a few ideas to to make that jump from the from the left brain. You know, really, which we need. We need, but to get into that creative space? Yeah, well, first of all, you you have to start doing. I mean, because uh, sometimes our left brain is, is telling us, um, you're stuck, uh, you're not gonna do anything good today, um, it's, it's a waste of time if you go to the studio today, you know, stuff like that. And you have to go against that and start doing something. Even if it's crap, just do something. <laughs> that's right. And that's really, I mean, the, the, the flow will come with the action. And another thing that I do is that, um, especially with my students, um, I give them words like, you know, adjectives and, um, so they write these these words like bold, like straight, like whatever word that I give them, and and they are very you know they, they write them down. So they are using their left brain, their left brain. Mm -hmm. And then I say, okay, now you start doing exactly the contrary than what is written. And they look at me like they're puzzled. And and that's when something happens, you know, like I'm mm -hmm. disconnected both brains, and then they start doing something. <laughs> That's brilliant. I love that, Isidore. And it reminds me of what we sometimes do in studio. I've done this with some of my models, um, particularly when they've gone over to the International Modeling and Talent Association contest for acting and modeling and dancing. And they get asked to do all sorts of different expressions. So they have to kind of exaggerate, like happy, angry, sad, sexy, you know, frustrated, all these different expressions. And it's also, it's kind of counterintuitive. And, and it just gets you, like you say, out of that left brain, such a cool idea. Um, Nikki, do you want to add to that? Have you got any tips for us? Can we see you? Are you with us? Yeah, Nick? I can think, um, yes. Okay, um, cool. yeah. Um, can you see me? I'm, I can see you all. Yes, can there we go, me? we got you. Yes. There we go, yes, I can see okay. you. Um, okay. Yeah, I think it's, it's uh, I think it, all right, and, and you can hear me. Well, I think, yes. I think it's everything about mindset you know i think everything starts with the mindset so when you go in there if you have high expectation then you know you might pull back off a little bit but i think also what you know get in and then just open a tube of paint a cup a cup of colors and just splash it on or paint or you know just create and and and, and see sometimes something comes out of that um and then it's just it's really warming up and it's really getting your mindset right and what and how you, you know, just let it happen. It, and magic does happen. I really believe uh, that mm -hmm. follows if you actually just allow yourself to go that way. So that's my tip is just to, yeah, let loose and just have fun. Brilliant. And um, Sarah, I just want to bring you back because I know that I met you in a meditation group. So um, would you add anything else like that or any, any other sort of tips? Uh, yes. Um... 
Look, procrastination is very real, I think, um, certainly for me. Um, I can I don't like cleaning, but I find my, I can clean my house uh, to avoid painting sometimes just because I feel I'm nervous about a particular piece I'm working on or I, I, pr I perhaps finished um, a, a piece that I've been working on for a while and now it's the case of that white paper, blank paper, blank canvas syndrome, you know, where you suddenly paint Um I find ways of getting around that is slapping paint on and, and sort of making a background, which just takes away that whiteness um, and then going forward. Um, sketching, just picking up a story. I'm, I'm trying to do at the moment um, like five minutes a day, literally only five minutes, but walk in the studio, pick up a pencil or a piece of charcoal and do some quick sketches, like really short minute poses. It can be of anything, but I mean, generally I'll do, I'll do people or something, but never with the intention of it being a work of art, literally just a rough sketch because it does that whole left brain, right brain, gets you out of that, frees up your hands. It's, it's a bit like warming up before a race or something like that. Um, and I find that helps. And also, I, I do meditate. Um, I tend not to do that in the studio, um, although I have. But also writing, um, getting a, a notebook and literally writing what's, especially if you're overwhelmed, um, writing down your thoughts. There's a, an, a, an author, what we should call Julie, uh, Julia Cameron, um, that wrote The Artist's Way. Um, and she advocates what she calls the artist's pages, which is to write, um, I think it's about two A3, uh, A4 sheets um, in the morning. First thing when you wake up and you write down your thoughts, you empty your head basically with anything and everything that's bothering you. And that frees up, you know, uh, frees you up to be able to sort of create going forward um, and get you out of that procrastination sort of um, mindset. Um, so that works. But yeah, meditation, if you do enjoy it, can work wonders. You know, even if it's just 10 minutes of just sitting and, but also then good music also works. You know, just something that's going to get you smiling and, and sort of, well, oh, has anyone seen Peter Rabbit, the movie, the kids' movie? No. And he, there's a lady in that who's an artist and he, she paints and she's like this while she's dancing at the same time. I don't know how it would work great, but I don't think it could. Um, but the concept behind it is, yeah, let let go basically. Um, so if you're not, if you're quite a detailed sort of artist, obviously you can't be jigging around while you're painting, but you can do that perhaps in a sketchbook or on a loose piece of paper or canvas or something that you're not. And just, just to fill it up, and then you get into your, you know, and it just, it's like, um, as I said, you know, you just have to get into the studio. Um, so you've got to find something that makes you want to go in there, not be, oh, I'm dreading it, you know, so you can just walk in and find, pick up a pencil or a paintbrush and just do something quick. All of a sudden, then you're like, right, okay, what's next, you know, and, and before you know it, um, yeah. that's it, you're lost, you know. So it's just taking those first steps, I think. and and yeah, and getting rid of that self doubt. Yes. For the enjoyment of it rather than the end result. You know? yeah. So key. So key for so much in life, actually. It actually, I'm, I'm just as you were saying that about. Um, uh, I was thinking about uh, authors and I actually wrote a novel many years ago and then uh, my content for my course I wrote as a book. And one of the tips that I got from, I think it was my novel writing teacher, was to, at the end of the day, write an unfinished sentence so that it's not complete. So you've got something to kick off with like the next day. Yeah. Um, and another another thing that somebody um, told me about, which I thought was very valid, is to take five minutes at the end of your day and look at what you're doing and kind of plan, whether it's writing it down, whether it's in your head, plan what you're gonna do the next day, where you're gonna start. So then you're not walking in going, oh, where, 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 what am I gonna do now? You know what's needed, what's now, you know, um, which also I think helps. You know. Yeah, beautiful. Ladies, can you believe we're almost on the hour? I could sit here and chat with you all for another hour. Um, so maybe at some point we'll have to do individual sessions with you each so that you can have a bit more airtime. 
This has been amazing. And um, just for the sake of time, can I ask each of you just to drop your details below in the comment section below our video, just so that if anybody needs to find you, they can find your website, find your art, find your classes, find what you don't have to do it right now. We can go back as well. Um, and um, yeah, this has been amazing. And I'm so grateful for you to you all for coming on because it really is, it's such an inspiring subject for so many of us, I'm sure, and many of you watching. I hope that you have all enjoyed this thoroughly. And I will be bringing another amazing guest next week. Um, she's actually a writer too. And um, she was also saying, it's so much easier sometimes to say, here are my books. These are my novels that I wrote. Here's my art rather than here's me. <laughs> So uh, I love that you all came on with me. Thank you. Any last words from anybody? Well, thank you very much, Naomi. That was such a pleasant time, and I'm really grateful for this. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. thanks Naomi. Yeah, it was lovely to, and you know, having done your course, this also was quite a nerve wracking, but it hasn't been so bad, and actually, it's been fun with having other artists, and uh, you know, so thanks. I appreciate it. You're all so welcome. Thank you all. Okay, we're going to sign off and see you all next week. Take care. Lots of love. Thank you, Naomi. Yeah.